Now, you might have thought that all those smart investment decisions you've made over the years were the result of skill, but the unfortunate truth is they were far more likely down to luck. A behavioural flaw that often trips investors up is outcome bias. To explain what it is, here's Joe Wiggins. Outcome bias is the idea that we look at the results of something and then assume that the process that led to those results is a, is a good thing and is a positive thing. So in investing what we do, we look at performance of a stock or a fund or an asset class. And if that performance is very strong, we think that fund must be good, that asset class must be, have positive traits and will continue. But that is often very misleading. And the opposite of that is if we see an asset class that's underperformed for a period or produce weaker returns, we then assume that that asset class no longer has value or merit. So we end up being very concentrated in things that have performed well in the more recent past. Of course, in many areas of life, outcomes and results are rather telling. In education, for example, politics or business. So why is it not the case in investing? I'd say in investing often the reverse is true. So the stronger the past performance, the more stratospheric those returns, the more likely it is that returns will disappoint and be lower in the future. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is that unsustainably high returns go back to average, so there's painful mean reversion often. And second, valuations of assets that perform very well in the past tend to be incredibly high, and higher valuations mean lower future returns. There is, for Joe, another factor at play, random chance. Investing is rather like sport in that it's hard to distinguish between luck and skill. They are closely related because they both have a lot of randomness and luck in their results. You can't look at the results of a a sports team or an investment and just assume that because they've been good there is some skill there or they have some advantage. Let's think about a football team who sack their manager and appoint a, a new manager, there's often a, a new manager bounce and people think that's due to the skillful appointment of a new manager but often it's just they've sacked a manager who's, who's had a run of bad luck and then they return to average once that new manager is appointed. So historic results in sport and investing are, are often misleading and it's very dangerous to draw too many strong conclusions just from past performance. 95% of short-term investment results, maybe even 99%, is due to luck, it's due to pure chance. So, you know, you start flipping coins and you flip four or five heads in a row, which happens more often than you might think it happens over a series of a couple hundred coin tosses, and all of a sudden you think you are a stock market genius. Outcome bias is phenomenal. Who decides whether your decision is good or not? It's normally the outcome. If you run through a traffic light and no one gets hurt, was that a good or a bad decision? So what decides the quality of that outcome? So in financial terms, of course, you know, did I, did, I, did I win or lose? Did I make a profit or a loss? Is an outcome, and that's probably crystal clear. But it mightn't be if you take a long-term perspective. So you might lose today, but over the long term, you might actually win. Sadly, some people who have early success at trading stocks can't stop themselves trying their luck again. Like problem gamblers, they can end up losing large sums of money. The problem with investing is that this ratio of skill to luck is very much in favor of luck. That is, you can do the most stupid thing buy a stock for no good reason at all. And by luck, it turns out to be a winner. And if you are not careful, you think that you're a genius. And then you go on. Uh, and of course, it's kind of like in a casino, you have a few wins. Do you think that that lady luck is with you? The casino knows better and you're likely to leave that casino empty pockets. But it's not just ordinary investors who get lucky. Professionals do too, and they're often just the ones investors choose to manage their money. In a world where week to week it's pretty much a 50-50 whether a given thing goes up or down, you know, 50% of the time someone's going to be right regardless. Try to judge whether someone is successful as an investor because of luck or skill is, is very, very difficult. And the natural human tendency we have is if we see something that looks like a pattern, we very readily accept that it's a pattern. So we look at someone who's been successful 
two, three years in a row and we think they must be a genius. In reality, they quite likely have just been lucky. And even if you look over a period of 10 years and you take the mutual funds that have done best over the past 10 years, it's, you might say to yourself, well, they've done well for 10 years, they must have a good strategy. But you take those, those cohorts of funds with good 10 year returns, and then you follow them forward the next 10 years, and you find out that if anything, they do worse than average. That's just because of the, the extreme contribution of luck to, to financial returns. So what are the dangers of focusing on outcomes and past performance? Here's Joe again. One of the most chronic and dangerous investor behaviors, which we see all the time, is investors will look at the asset classes and funds that have performed well over the last year or the last three years. They'll sell the assets that haven't performed well, rotate into those ones that have done incredibly well. And then those funds and assets will inevitably disappoint over the next three years. And then they'll be sold again into the next batch of strongly performing assets and funds. And that, at the time, it makes us feel good. If we feel positive to sell the laggards and buy the winners. But the long-term effect of that can be quite disastrous. Outcome bias in investing is very common. The good news is you can protect yourself against it. I think the key principle here is to remain diversified. Appropriate diversification means owning different types of assets and different types of funds that perform well in varying environments and it means holding things that are performing strongly and also owning laggards for certain periods so do not abandon the principles of diversification to chase the next performance fad diversification then is a very sensible strategy it's also one that most financial academics adhere to when investing their own money there is a bit of a disconnect we have all of these insights about how you know what people should be doing but they are not really taken by a lot of you know, people who actually make decisions. We have to take you know, these things that we found about how investors trade more seriously and better connect with you know, the finance media about how things are done. I'm basically putting all of my money in extremely diversified um, funds. That's done reasonably okay for me. I study behavioral finance, but I think in my own portfolio decisions, I'm extremely rational. <laughs> in summary then, don't assume that good outcomes are down to skill. Focus on your investment process and, crucially, stay diversified. That way, you'll put the odds of a successful outcome in your favour.